Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, April 1st, 2016, and here are some of today's trends in the news. I have an important announcement to make. Donald Trump, it looks like he's out of the race. Whoop! He did one of those women things too many last week. And his popularity rating among women, it's down. Like 73% of them don't like the cat. So he's gone. So I'm going to take his place. We need another candidate in there for president. And I'm announcing my candidacy as a contestant in the presidential reality show, in the race for the White House. After all, I could out-Trump Trump. I could make America greatest again. That's better than great. Yeah, forget about that wall over there in Mexico. I'm going to put a wall across Mexico and Canada and get both of them to pay for it. That's right. And forget about worse than waterboarding. I could outwater waterboarding. We're going to bring torture to a new level. Amputations. One finger after another. One toe after another. We're going to get them to speak. And I'll melt ISIS around the world. And we'll get Japan to pay for it. We'll get Italy to pay for it. We'll get everybody to pay for it. I'll out-Trump Trump by a mile. I'll bring back jobs, taxes. Nope. We're going to bring them taxes down to nothing. That's right. Even the corporations, they don't have to pay either. Because when America becomes greatest again, you just leave it to me. It'll be amazing. It'll be absolutely amazing. So the only competition out there that I really see is Bernie. And I could out Bernie. Bernie, I mean, Bernie, he was just over there in the Bronx. And he said, in the Bronx, I was born in Brooklyn? Hey, Bernie. I was born in the Bronx. Yeah. And, and I'm going to give you not only free education, and, and I'm going to give you free health care, and your grandmother is going to live like a princess after she retires because that's the way it should be. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a Cadillac in every garage. I'm going to give you a chicken in every pot. And we're going to make the billionaires pay for it because this country has to be equal and I can out-equal that. We're going to, we're not, we're, go, I, we're going to give you free sex. Well, almost free because you got to pay for it one way or another. Hey, it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> Why would anybody want to run for president? And that's what it is, man. It's a fool's day. You watch this clown throw out those cheap lines. The cat's only doing another Obama, man. Bernie's doing Obama. Yeah, remember change you could believe in? Oh, you forgot that one, huh? How about a future you could believe in? That's what Bernie's using. B.S. Bernie bringing up Obama, man. From Bernie to Obama, from Obama to Bernie, it's April Fool's. Anyway, let's go on to the markets. Over there in Asia, wasn't a very happy day over in Nikkei land. Yeah, that Nikkei landed down over 3%. Hang Sang, whoop, it was down, but then whoop, at the end of the day, in comes that national team. Yep, move back up a bit. Hang Sang, whoop, a little lower. Cross Europe, lower. And here in the States, yeah, the market was down over 100 points on the news of the employment data. And remember yesterday I said I wasn't sure and I wasn't going to be very you know, positive about it. And I was just thinking that the numbers would come in lower than expectations on the new employment data. And a good thing I didn't say I was sure because I was wrong. Numbers came in better than expected. And on that news, the markets went down, that's right, over 100 points. But then they backs, bounced back over 100. And even though 
oil was down over 4%. So I don't hear the prestitutes talking on the business media about the connection between the markets and oil anymore. But boy, they played that one out really well for a long time. Woof, and gold got whacked. Down 12, it was down over 20. So let's see what happened and why it happened the way it did. U.S. oil sheds 4% after, ready? Saudi comment on output freeze. Yep, so we had this uh, Saudi prince, and you know how they become a prince, a frog was kissed by a princess, and the frog becomes a prince. Yes, yeah, so that prince, yeah, glorious prince. The dictator's son over there in Saudi Arabia, he made it very clear that if Iran doesn't cut back on production, there's not going to be any talk about a production freeze of oil. So again, they've been pumping this up on the upcoming meeting in April 17th, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So that's what brought oil prices up, and now they're moving back down. Futures slightly paired losses after oil field service firm Baker Hughes reported its weekly count of oil rigs operating in the United States fell by 10 to a total of 362. You ready for this? At this time last year, drillers had 802 rigs in U.S. oil fields. 802. And now we're down to 336. I mention this because when they keep talking about an oil freeze of production, once prices go back up, man, these rigs start pumping again. And now you multiply this by the rest of the world. So I don't see oil prices going up beyond the range that we were talking about. In the, in the low 30s, even back into the 20s, the high 20s, up to maybe the 50s. That's it. But remember, it was at $115 a barrel back in June of 2014. And I mentioned about the employment gains and the employment numbers. Just to make this clear, as of today, our nation faces job losses still of 1.5 million people if you want to return back to pre-recession levels. So just to put that in perspective. Now let's look at where the jobs came from. Construction employment added 37,000 jobs. Huh. Wait a minute, didn't I see and read in this past week and last week, new home sales in February were down 7.1%, excuse me, existing home sales were down 7.1%, and new home sales, when you pull out the West, were down 8%. So how is all these construction jobs going to keep going? The other great gainers were 37,000 jobs in health care. Great. They don't pay anything that could give you a middle-class living. Other ones, employment continued to trend up in food service and drinking places where 25,000 jobs were added. That's called waitresses, bartenders, dishwashers, and people working in restaurants. Mining employment declined 12,000 jobs a loss of 185,000 over the year. Employment and manufacturing, that's where the money is. Down nearly 30,000 jobs. But retail was the big one. They added 48,000 jobs. So, huh, they added 48,000 jobs but Macy's, Kohl's, all these companies are closing joints. And I read the data, and you saw it in your trends monthly. What was consumer spending 
in February, the grand total rise of 0.1%. What was it in January? The grand total up 0.1%. So how are they creating jobs in retail? And even if they are, they don't pay much at all. So there you go. That's on that front of which really nothing more than, I believe, numbers that show where America is. The numbers are probably real. The labor force participation rate, you know, ticked up a tiny percentage point, but it's still back to 1970s lows. And the jobs that are being created are not living wage jobs. You can't save anything and you can't make enough to build anything bigger. Political tensions steer central banks to gold. Heightened geopolitical tensions and a push for diversification in reserve assets led central banks' net purchases of gold reaching 483 tons in 2015, the second highest annual total since the end of the gold standard. And China and Russia are among the big buyers. And then you look at gold, it's had its, they say it's best month in some 30 years in terms of growth. Gold prices rose 16% for the first three months of the year, the biggest leap since 1986. And of course, as countries were buying it, other countries that are desperate, like Venezuela, Colombia, El Salvador, they were selling it. So you know us, think for yourself. Going back to the stocks, stocks going up, not on news of real price discovery. Here is another fact. You read it in your Trends Monthly, you can read it again and hear it again right now. First quarter earnings for S&P 500 companies are forecast to slump 8.5% from the same period last year, according to Fact Set. Shares are already more expensive than their historical averages after seven years of a bull market. Not a bull market, a bullshit market. A bullshit market driven up by quantitative easing, zero interest rate policies that have enriched the filthy rich because you look at that number, just what I just wrote to you, read to you, where the increase of a bull market has come, 95% of that wealth, it's a fact, went to the 1%. But when I'm elected, I'm going to make sure that the 1% gives you back. Yeah, Bernie, how about you save your, save your Brooklyn Act for the guys on Coney Island? I remember watching you guys. Yeah. And the people applaud this stuff. They applaud it like little children, just like they bought into Obama. Hope and change you could believe in. Yep. A future you could believe in. Same fraud, different name. Anyway, the S&P's 500 trailing price earnings ratio is at 18.2, according to FactSet, higher than the 10-year average of 15.8. So there you have it. The stocks are overvalued. Earnings are in a slump. And the market's going up. It makes perfect nonsense. McDonald's to expand reach in China. Fast food giant seeks investment partner to help build out its franchise business. Interestingly, just tying in with this, is one in eight adults now obese, global survey. Yeah, keep spreading that junk food out there. Keep eating crap and keep listening to it because that's all they're serving, whether it's on the presidential reality show or what they call the news. It's crap for the mind, and they serve crap for the body. Hey, it's April Fool's, April 1st. This is Gerald Salenti, 
And that's some of today's trends in the news.